Hundreds remain stranded, ethnic Armenians seeking the protection of Russian peacekeepers who now control this airport in Nagorno-Karabakh. They fled their towns and villages, fearing the arrival of Azerbaijani soldiers, despite Baku saying that people of Armenian descent will be protected by the constitution. But like many here, Valery Erepetyan thinks it's safer to move on. Who can give us the guarantee? We found a litre of gasoline, ran away and came here. Shall we go so that the young people are killed along the way? Speaking to the nation, Armenian Prime Minister Nikol Pashinyan said the situation remains very dangerous for the estimated 120,000 ethnic Armenians living in the region. Armenians in Nagorno-Karabakh continue to face the threat of ethnic cleansing. In recent days, humanitarian aid has arrived, but this does not change the situation. And unless real living conditions are created and effective mechanisms of protection from ethnic cleansing, then the Armenians of Nagorno-Karabakh will see exile from their homeland. Armenians claim Nagorno-Karabakh as their ancestral homeland, but the mountainous region is internationally recognized as part of Azerbaijan since the fall of the Soviet Union. In 2020, Azerbaijan launched a major offensive reclaiming territory occupied by Armenia. It led to a ceasefire agreement between the two countries. This latest military push was aimed at disbanding and disarming ethnic Armenian fighters who have now surrendered their weapons under a Russian-mediated agreement. This is the, uh, the weapon. This is a, uh, the weapon that used to belong to uh, the Armenian Armed Forces detachments and also irregular Armenian, uh, Armenian forces that were here. And it was uh, seized from them just in the last two days, during the last two days. But as Azerbaijan tightens its grip on Nagorno-Karabakh, international concern is mounting about the plight of civilians. The first humanitarian convoy arrived in the region on Saturday, carrying 70 tons of basic supplies. Ethnic Armenian leaders say they are in talks to organize a withdrawal process and the return of those displaced by the fighting. But after three decades of rivalry, mistrust between the two sides runs deep and many of those living here say they wouldn't feel safe living under Azerbaijani rule. Hod Abdelhamid, Al Jazeera. Arsen Khatayan is a former advisor to the Armenian prime minister, and he says most ethnic Armenians don't want to live under Azerbaijani rule, and they don't trust its promises. We're still talking about a despotic authoritarian regime in Azerbaijan. So, I mean, many of their own citizens are deprived of many rights, but there is also an ongoing and continuous Armenophobia and xenophobia against Armenians in, in, in Azerbaijan. I mean, this could be, if ever, this could be a long process. I mean, there should be confidence building measures. There should be dialoguing. There should be some kind of a reconciliation before we can take, talk about any kind of integration. As we saw today, uh, I mean, 90% of the people are ready to leave Karabakh now, and I think they're now basically kept hostage there. We, we're all personally trying to be in touch. There is a little communication. Uh, it goes off and on. There is internet and cell phone communication on and off. And the people I'm talking to, uh, most everyone is saying we're ready to leave anytime. So uh, I, I think there is no doubt in anybody's mind that after what they saw last week or this week, the new attack, renewed attack from Azerbaijan and the rhetoric that we're hearing from Baku, people are not imagining themselves living under Azerbaijani rule. Obviously, people don't want uh, their compatriots to lose their homes and their ancestral lands. Uh, but are we? I, I don't think we're left with any other chance. I mean, if these people are under an imminent threat, life threat, I don't think anybody has any choice. There is no trust in the, the judicial system. There is no control over how and what is going to be the cases that could be fabricated against the people they simply don't like. So there is little trust on how the Azerbaijani judiciary is going to try Armenians, and they're going to pick and choose. It's going to become a witch hunt. At least that's what we're seeing from the Armenian side. Well, earlier we spoke to Hikmet Hajev, foreign policy advisor to the Azerbaijani president, and we asked him about his country's offer of amnesty for separatists who disarm in Nagorno-Karabakh. 
as part of the 20th September of halting uh, the counter-terrorist actions, Azerbaijan made it very clear that who puts their guns down uh, from the first Karabakh, uh, Second Karabakh War, 44 days war, and the recent engagement, simply they are free. And here we should differentiate two groups of people. Uh, one group is a uh, servicemen of the armed force of the Republic of Armenia. If they also put the gun down, and they can return back to the Republic of Armenia. As part of this, uh, this uh, armament, it's also a demobilization process as such. And also local residents who were holding the arms, and uh, if they put also their guns down, and they can return uh, to their barracks and from there to demobilize. Simply, they are free. And here should be better understanding for them, everybody, what is their differentiation? Differentiation, we are talking about there are some selective couple of them, people who in the first Karabakh war committed crimes, uh, war crimes against Azerbaijani uh, civilians in a very broader scale. We are talking about them and mainly they were at the leadership of the so-called illegal regime. Again, these are the particular individuals and selective individuals that we are talking about. That. But with the majority male generation, male population, we don't have a problem. In a broader sense, with the civilians, and we shouldn't have a problem, as, uh, on the contrary, we are inviting them and we are trying to reach out to the different channels. I would also really commend the very first fact that the directly, direct engagement of central Azerbaijani government invited representatives of uh, Armenian residents of Karabakh to have a direct communication on the broad agenda of the issues, including the political reintegration model, social economic issues, and they asked on certain issues, and central government of Azerbaijan immediately reacted and will continue to do so, and then more intensive meetings are coming forward as well to meet all of these uh, immediate requirements.